feel like the camera makes me look like I have far too much blush on, but it doesn't look like that in real life, I don't think. But I just wanted to pop on and say hi, welcome to a new week, and also sometimes I do make an effort. <laughs> no, I've just been feeling a little bit like poopy about myself recently. So I woke up in a bad mood this morning and was like, screw it, let's put some red lip lippy, lippy stick on. Um, so that's what I did. I've got a new little wrap cardigan on, which I'm obsessed with, vinted. My whole wardrobe is gonna become vinted, but I promise my blusher isn't this bad. Maybe I'm just hot, I don't know. I'm going to work. Does anyone else, when they're blow drying their hair, like, I blow dry my hair upside down, just to get that horrible feeling that you're gonna look up and there's gonna be someone standing there watching you when you're doing it and you're home alone. Because I get it every time, and I don't often, to be fair, I don't often blow dry my hair anymore. But when I do, every time, I get like the heebie-jeebies. It's like the same feeling when you are running up the stairs and it's dark behind you and you just feel like someone's gonna grab your ankle. I get it every time I blow dry my hair. Just thought I would uh, share my morning experience of that with you today. I don't often blow dry my hair, but I have done it today. I don't think I like it straight anymore. It doesn't get much volume, which is why I've got this clip in it, because it just kind of lifts the front. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what it looks like, what it ends up like. Goodness me. It's Saturday today, I've had porridge for breakfast. There's something I find really relaxing about, on a slow day, just making my own porridge. Like, But I did make the mistake of buying gluten-free porridge oats this time, instead of normal ones so i was a bit hesitant as to what they'll be like they're all right they're a bit slimy that's the only texture thing i can say but it still tasted like porridge so yeah i was if i don't like them i was going to give them to my friend who is gluten free she's celiac um <laughs> but they were quite nice but at least at least she now knows that if she ever comes over to my house for a sleepover she can have porridge in the morning. But now I'm starving. I've uh, cleaned the bathroom. I've had a shower and cleaned myself. Um, I need to do a bit of cleaning down here. I feel like all I do is freaking clean this house. That's one of the things about living in a house that you're renovating, is no matter how much you clean it, it always looks dirty till Lala is eating it. Well, she's shredding a loo roll. This is one of her favorite things. I don't know where it started, um, I don't know why it started, but she doesn't eat it, she just rips it up. I think I've said it in a vlog before, but she gets so excited, it's like the best reward ever when she gets an empty loo roll. And then I have to clean it up. Lovely. So that's going to be my job now, isn't it? Hmm? What you're gonna burp? She's so funny. She burps. For, she burps loads. Oh, puppy stretch. Bless you. Okay. Bye. By the way, this rug. Did I show you this last week? I got this rug at the garden centre when I went with my mum last week. I can't remember if I showed you in the vlog last week. But honestly, the best thing I've bought this year. Just saying. It's from Scottsdale's in Cambridge. Um, I think there's Scottsdale's everywhere else. But they do vouchers every year. I think if you have a Scottsdale's card and my mum does. Because we're from the country. So we obviously have garden centre cards. Um... <laughs> It was 50% off, so it was £15 instead of 30 And honestly, look how big it is. <sighs> it's huge. So it's like, they did loads of colour different, like colourways, but I've got obviously naturally got the burnt orange because my thought was that it's red enough for me to have out Christmas, but it's orange enough for me to have out all year. Um, and it's also really soft and fluffy on the other side. But yeah every evening since buying this blanket ben and i have cocooned ourselves in it every evening so 
well worth the 15 pounds it does already need a wash though hmm now i'm paranoid delilah came in yesterday from the garden and she's clearly eating cat poo does anyone else's dog please please does anyone else's dog just obsess over trying to eat cat poo delilah does it all the time but she came yesterday and she stank so i gave her a shower and now i've just found I don't think it is, I think it's just mud. It doesn't smell and it was a strong smell. Anyway, that's nice, isn't it? Now you know that sometimes my house smells like cat shit because my dog eats it. <laughs> my plan for the rest of the day is to have quite a chilled one. I think I'm gonna walk to um, Audi and the co-op to get some dinner and I need to get a few like essential things that like we're running out of milk. So I'll take you along on that walk. Maybe we can walk down the uh, rubbish aisles in Audi because that's the best. They're the best aisles, right? And see if there's anything in there. I just don't like it straight. I've decided I don't like it straight anymore. Yeah, the shit aisles in Audi are the best aisles. Let me know in the comments if you're an Audi shopper, what is the best thing you've ever bought from the shit aisles in Audi? Because everyone picks up really random stuff and sometimes it turns out to be the best thing you've ever bought. So let me know in the comments. What's your favourite thing that you've ever bought from the rubbish aisles in Audi? I just watched that clip black, back, black, back, <laughs> and realised that I called this a rug. It is quite clearly a blanket. You don't need to tell me that I got it wrong, okay. I wanted to try and sit you somewhere with a cute background, but I have nowhere to put you and I can't find my tripod, so I'm gonna have to hold you. But <laughs> I wanted to quickly have a little chat because this is obviously gonna be a little short vlog this week. Nothing's really happened, so it would have been very repetitive if I had vlogged every day. But I wanted to just have a chat about something that I talked about on my Instagram. I listened to a podcast yesterday. It was a really old one. It was actually one of um, Fern Cotton's Happy Place podcast. It was the Maisie Williams one. And they were talking about our quirks and everyone has these things that makes us different from everybody else. And But how we always feel like we need to fit in. So we feel like we need to be like other people so that we'll be accepted so that we can fit in and feel like we've been successful because everybody likes us or like they think we're good at what we do um, because we do it their way and that's something that I've kind of always struggled with but really struggle with at the moment is feeling like I need to do things in a certain way or in the same way as someone else or have the same sort of personality traits as somebody else or act in the same way, find the same things funny, dress the same way, I don't know, I just, I'm, at the moment I feel like I'm really struggling with my identity because I'm surrounded by people every day that I am nothing like. Now there's some people, like, obviously there's people that <laughs> majority of the time I am because they're like my circle, but there's still people I think whether you look at it in like a in a professional way, so within work or in a friendship group where you kind of feel like I don't know how to explain it. But basically the moral of this podcast was that actually the things that make you different and the things that you think other people will find weird about you or your weird quirks and your weird, I don't know, anything that makes you different from somebody else is actually such a strength and that in turn goes into like your career and things because 
the best way for things to work is for multiple ideas to be brought to the table and things to be done in, in different ways that we like you can learn what works better and it works the same way within life if we were all the same and everyone thought in the same way and everyone liked the same things and everyone did the same things and wore the same things and how boring would the world be yeah that podcast kind of hit quite hard because as i just said that's something that i've struggled with for a, for a long time but more so quite recently where i just feel like i don't fit in with the crowd i'm putting on a front to make people like me when actually that's not what i should be doing i should be showing who i actually am and the fact that i am a bit of a weirdo <laughs> And I should be embracing that side of me because that's what makes me me. That's what makes me who I am. And why should we feel like we have to hide who we actually are to feel like we need to fit in? The big thing for me, I think, is why do we actually feel like... Oh, my TV's just gone to... Let's just turn that off. Why, why do we feel like we have to fit in? If you look back in history, I don't know any names or anything, but a lot of the people that have been so successful in what they do are people that have gone against the current, who have st stood up and been different. They're the people that have succeeded in life. So why are we taught to fit in? <laughs> I'm really not very good at like putting my thoughts into words, but I know what I want to say, and I really hope that it makes sense to you what I'm trying to say but basically moral of the story is I am going to try and become more comfortable with me and showing who I am and just letting my little weirdo out and embracing it really and if people don't like me then that's their problem not mine that is the journey that I'm about to embark on <laughs> so if you'd like to join me on this journey <laughs> Um, make sure you follow me over on Instagram because that's probably where I'll be having most of my rambles although probably not actually, I don't know anyway, follow me on Instagram anyway but yeah, I just wanted to mention it but yeah, I posted about it on Instagram yesterday and it was actually quite overwhelming with how many people sent me messages like really nice messages and it just reiterated even more that the people who mean the most to you and who are closest to you are actually the people that love that side of you. They're like the ones in your close circle are the ones that you want to embrace your weirdo. And actually they already do and they love that side of you and they know that that's what makes you you. But the people on the outside of your circle that you're trying to be accepted by, what they think of you isn't important at all and what they think of you doesn't change who you are and what they think of you doesn't change how successful you're going to be in your career or it within your life in general that means nothing and it really shouldn't get to us like it does we should be taught to embrace the differences that we have with other people because like i said at the start how boring would it be if we were all the same and liked the same things and liked the same people? Like, being a girl would be even worse when you're younger if you all liked the same person because it's bitchy enough as it is. <laughs> yeah, that is my Saturday thought and feedback to you. I probably made no sense what I was trying to say, but basically, just be you and the people that mean the most to you and the people that you want in your lives are the ones that will accept all of your weird weirdness. Okay? Okay. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs>